morning, Mr. Sharma, uh, clinical coordinator and lecturer. Today, we'd like to do an interview regarding our, our profession, which is physiotherapy. So to start it off, I'd like to ask you, uh, can you tell us something about yourself? So first of all, uh, good morning to you. And uh, my name is Sharma, as you all know me. Okay. Uh, I'm a clinical coordinator here. Just recently appointed as clinical coordinator. I'm here in Ames University for the past four years. This is my fourth year here. And uh, basically I'm from KL. I'm the eldest in my family. And uh, yeah, something that's you know. So I'm with the second question. Uh, why do you choose to pursue physiotherapy in the first place? Uh, physiotherapy wasn't the first choice for myself. As uh, I moved towards engineering type of guy, actually. so but um, due to some unfortunate reason, I got to choose physiotherapy later part. But uh, when I look at the cost right uh, prior before I before I joined, I think uh, I had some instincts that you know we have a good prospect and so demand in the near future because that was the time when physiotherapy was coming up, booming up at that point of the time. So I think uh, I choose the right profession. What are the motivations that keep you going on in this profession? I think uh, the passion that I'm having in this profession, which is keeping me in this profession until today. Why? Because um, um, basically my mom, she's a staff nurse. So when I see her serving for the people, so I do uh, experience that and uh, it, it, she instilled that the passion, that love, that care that we should show, we, we should be showing it to uh, a person. So I think that is the most important reason in this. Do you want to become a better lecturer? <coughs> um, become a better lecturer. Basically, I don't prefer to be an academician. I'm not an academic staff or something, you know, I go towards clinical side, you know. I prefer my hands to speak more than myself or my mouth. So, I think um, that would be the reason, but uh, being a lecturer is something unexpected. I just gave a try in Ames and I got hired. So it was something, uh, uh, something like a new experience for me, from clinical side totally to a different field where academic it is, and um, I think it's quite, it's quite what do you say, um, interesting so far. Do you think doing physiotherapy can bring a lot of prospects of income in the future? Yes, definitely. I would say definitely. Yes, it is. Why? Because when, like I said in my introduction, when I look at the prospect of this profession in the near future, as we are a developing nation, uh, we, we are open to all of the professions right now. So we will be highly in demand in the future. So that is why if you guys see right now, uh, like government has took the step of upgrading the staff from diploma to degree. So these are the major steps taken by the government to upgrade ourselves and to promote the profession uh, at the right time. So I think definitely there is high prospect. I now that we have a little bit of background, I'd like to ask, why did you choose to work in Ames University? Okay, uh, not specifically Ames. I applied everywhere, uh, but my, I got Hide immediately on in games. Yeah. So you got other choices before this? Yes, yes, I do. I did have choices like in. Uh, uh, I did apply in Massa. I did apply in uh, CUCMS. Uh, I did apply in Utah. Yeah. So now, what do you feel is your greatest professional strength? Greatest professional strength, I would say, my hand. No, not really. Yeah, took surprise. Yes, yes. Right. Uh, greatest professional strength, I think, uh, 
the empathy, the love that that I show towards people, especially to my clients or my patients. I think uh, that is my greatest strength. And how your most favorite subject? Most favorite subject? Uh, let's say cardiorespiratory, um, which is about lungs, heart, and rest of the blood circulatory system and so on. I think um, that's my specialized area. What makes you like uh, cardiorespiratory more than, for example, uh, musculoskeletal or stroke cases? Um, as we own the heart, I think the heart is the one which controls the rest of the body. So when we have a good heart, healthy heart, I think the rest of the systems will function well compared to the rest, including bones and also brains and so on. Now, we'd like to know what is uh, an interesting case that you've gone through in the past. Interesting case? Um, I would say, I've seen many number of cases, many number of diagnoses, but um, the, the case that which uh, really broke me apart, okay, I would say amputation cases. Um, you, can I share some of my experiences? Okay, um, it was just recently, like two months back, when I was in hospital, I saw this guy, a Malay guy, um, he was bilaterally amputated, means that he don't own his both leg. Um, he was accompanied by his wife. She came along with him, and uh, while he was having his therapy session in the department, in the outpatient department, she was looking at him. You know, from the way she looks itself, I could understand that he must have been the sole breadwinner for the family, and she looked so puzzled confused and um, it's like she don't have a clue on what what gonna happen in the next day or in future when he is the only person who supports the family so when we see this kind of situations you know um, it's seriously heart touching and heartbreaking situations and sincerely I would say that amputation is not a solution so I think um, um, Doctors, they have to come up with any sort of new suggestions instead of performing amputations. What do you consider to be a weakness? My weakness? <laughs> uh, my weakness would be my anger, my impatience. Can I be frank? Right? Yeah. Can I be frank? Right? Yeah. So I think my anger and my impatience, that's my biggest flaws. What about a challenge or conflict that you have faced in your workplace? Challenge or conflict? I think the major conflict that I've faced so far is internal politics, which has been run in the department. Uh, I won't say here, you know, don't do it because that's out of. Okay, so I would say internal politics where people, you know, they, they don't agree and then they go against us. Such things is. It's not really welcomed in, in an environment like this. See? So we have to we have to be very much um, uh, open-minded in working with different cultures, different uh, person personals, and uh, different characters. I think we have to we have to be in the position of accepting everybody. So we can't be denying one. We can't be what do you say, uh, disagree with one. That that passes. Internal politics is the biggest challenge that I've ever faced. How do you deal during having stress or situations that are very pressurous to us, to yourself? Handling my stress level. I would say, you know, I basically I will keep quiet. When my stress level is too high, I'll tend to keep quiet and um, I will, um, what do you say? I'll keep myself away from everybody, just for the particular time, to calm myself down, and uh, to think wisely at that time. Because I can't be deciding anything during my anger is really at the peak. So, yeah, this is how I manage my stress. 
So where do you see yourself in five years from now? Being sick? Being sick. Probably. Um, that would be my long-term goal. So I think I will be in the lecturer's seat or upgrading myself from lecturer to senior lecturer, you know, as the flow goes on. I think definitely one day I'll be in Green City. How about opening your own center? Do you have any plans for that? Opening my own center, yes, I do have my plan for that. Uh, even that comes under my long term goal. So, yeah, maybe in the near future, I'll hold, I mean, I'll own my own center. Do you think you will let your children pursue the course of physiotherapy? Definitely, why not? I think uh, if I do have a son, um, yeah, I think I'll encourage my son to pursue his studies in physiotherapy. And um, like I say, you know, uh, demand is one side, but the care and the love that is shown towards people, I think that is much more precious compared to the money that you earn. So when you have, um, I think, blessings from the people, when we help them is the most, uh, what do you say, the valuable thing that we're going to own compared to the money that we're going to earn. So I think, yeah, definitely I'll support my, or encourage my kids to pursue their studies in physiotherapy. So do you think that physiotherapists play an important role in a multidisciplinary team? Yes, definitely. We, we as a physiotherapist, we do play uh, an important role in the multidisciplinary aspect where we are on the side of rehabilitating people, you know, who are seriously ill. So I think we play the major role besides a doctor, nurse, and other therapists, you know, like speech therapists, occupational therapists, or that. But I think um, physiotherapist plays a major role in this. Definitely. So, uh, to end it, I wanted to ask you: Do you have any advice that you would like to give us before we finish this interview? Sure. Um, this would be my uh, golden message to all the physiotherapists outside. Um, <clears throat> when I graduated at my, during my diploma, which was back in 2010, uh, at that time we had uh, so much of graduates coming out in the, into the field, but some were left out of this profession um, without even continuing into it. So, and uh, I, I don't know whether they don't see the prospect in this field or something, but what I would say or I would advise is do not leave this profession at any moment. The longer you stay, it will serve you in a better manner in future. There was once where I was almost going out of, out of the field and that one person who, who was there at that time, he advised me, he said that, if you stay in a profession for at least six years, it will drive you to a greater path in coming years. So that is, those are the words which keeps me in this field right now. I'm in this field for the past nine years. So this is my ninth year. I have served six years, oh sorry, uh, five years in clinical side and four years in academic side. So I, I strongly believe in that word, do stay at least for six years. Within that six years, he said, you will learn everything, all of the ups and downs. You learn about the environment, you learn about the people and so on. And um, from there, you will be an experienced person. And from there on, it will bring you towards a greater path. I think I'd like to thank Zishama for having this interview. Thank you.